Hi, Kevin here. Welcome to the Claremont Classic Garage. Uh, what we're up against today is a little job I got to do for my father-in-law. Um, he's lived in the country for a long time. He's a retired guy. And his hobby was fixing up old farm tractors. So um, now him and my mother-in-law have decided that they want to downsize a little bit and move into a smaller place. So um, I decided I'm going to help him. I'm going to haul all his old tractors down to my place and, and sell them off for him. So uh, I'm going to show you the first one, and we'll take it for a spin. Okay, this here is a Farm All C. I'm pretty sure he told me it's a 1951. Um, this tractor came from somebody he knew. It was pretty well looked after its entire life. The tin work on it is, is beautiful. It's All its original stuff is still there. It's got the original lights. The... Uh, the fast hitch is still on it, and it works. So um, when he fixed it up, this was actually a pretty easy one to do. The engine was worn out. It was pumping oil and had no compression. So he put a set of jugs in it and put four new tires on it and fixed up the brakes and just kind of serviced it up and gave it a paint job, and, and it just turned out great. So anyway, let's hop on and take it for a spin. All right, here we are up here. Um, the top of that exhaust is exactly seven feet off the ground so you got to be careful going through garage doors with it as I found out. The uh, pull switch is here to turn the ignition on. That's your light switch. This is the control for the hydraulics and there's another one somewhere else. This here is the throttle. I'm going to try and get this thing going. It might take some choke so I might have to put the phone down because it'll take two hands but we'll try. Oh there she goes. All right, get her in reverse. Isn't this thing nice? Okay. Let's grab second gear. There goes Mr. Larkin and his nice old Ford truck. It's beautiful. No wonder everybody likes these old things. And this is a wide front, this one. Most of the ones I've come across are narrow front, so I don't know, um, you know, how rare it is or whatever, but it's a little bit different. I'm going to put it in third gear. Second gear is for the birds. There we go. Oh, I love the way those old transmissions whine. That's the original temperature gauge. Apparently it still works, but it's hard to read. Oh look, we haven't got the alternator started up yet. Hang on. I just gotta stop and wing the throttle up. There it goes. She'll charge now. It's got a Chevy alternator on it. Wow, she's a beaut, eh? The one thing with setting up so high on it, the farmer would really have a commanding view of his of his field while he's out there working on it, as opposed to you know sitting on an eight end where your head would probably be 18 inches lower than my head is on this. I still love my Kubota though. Okay, we're gonna go put this thing down by the road and stick a for sale sign on it. One of the things I have to do to get John's tractors all ship shaped so I could sell them is one, two, three of them, the batteries were pooched from sitting around in his yard. So we've come to the wreckers today to get some batteries. Now, I don't know if you people uh, recognize this place. You'd have to be a Mopar guy from from the Toronto area to recognize this place, but this is used to be Newmarket uh, Disposal or Newmarket Iron and Metal. And over here in this corner, there was a little old house, and this was the home of National Mole Parts. Uh, my old buddy Nigel ran his business out of here for years, and this whole corner of the yard would be filled with, with Mopar muscle cars, and we used to come up here and get parts for them. He since years ago moved out to his new place in Beaverton, but, um, warms my soul to come here. A lot of memories come flooding back. 
Okay, that's that done. We're out of here with three nice tested and guaranteed batteries for $177 tax. Next up, we got a Cockshot 30. I wish I knew what year it was. He told me I forgot. Um, this one, he took a little uh, poetic liberty or artistic liberty with it, I guess. It should be red with um, pale, pale yellow wheels, but he told me I had too many red tractors already, so he painted it orange with yellow wheels. Whatever. It looks okay. I don't mind it. Um, this one has got the um, a cock shut growler. The, the rear ends in these things are terrible. They've got um, uh, a double reduction in them with bull gears and little pinions. There's all kinds of stuff in there. And they are as loud as hell. And apparently these fenders are exactly precisely the perfect design that they telegraph that noise right up and it's like you're sitting between two amplifiers but it is what it is um somebody will want this thing i guess sooner or later for the right price somebody will want anything right so let's take her for a drive so apparently some of these had a live pto but i don't think this one does i don't feel a, a two-stage clutch so i say this one is not so equipped what it does have though it's a, a four-speed transmission and it, it does have, you can see the lever there, a high and low range. So that, that's something good. So she's an 8-speed. Anyway, let's crank it up and take it for a spin. You kind of, there's a starter button down there. So you flick the ignition on and you kind of work the starter with your your. Hand. See, just like that. Listen to this thing. She's a loud one. Okay, we're in low range. We'll put it in third gear. I take her for a spin. She's loud. But the drive's okay. Brakes work, that's good. We'll take her back up front and park it beside the farm. There we go, shut her down. I think it was about to shut itself down there, but anyway, that's that. That's a cock shot 30. Next up is this 1951 McCormick W4. It, uh, it's just kind of a nice size tractor. The the big back wheels, the big back tires make it look bigger than it is. It's a little bit bigger than a Ford, a little Ford or a Ferguson, but it's 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 not that big. It's kind of a cute thing. I like it. You sit way out the back of it. It's like being in an old. Uh, it's like being in an old slingshot dragster, you know. This one. Um, it's just a draw bar tractor. It's got no three point hitch on the back or nothing. It's just got a, got a swinging draw bar and a PTO. Pretty, pretty par for the course back in the day. A cock shut is set up the same. So um, let's take this thing for a spin and get acquainted with it, shall we? So it's got some interesting controls. The, the, the shifter is laid way back like this. Um, this here is the choke. That, that there. Yeah. I'd be lying if I told you I knew what that did. This is your throttle. This is for the shutters. It's got shutters. Anyway, we'll crank it up. Key switch. Clutch in. Shouldn't need choke. I had it running recently. Let's give her some throttle. There she goes. So, 
One issue I've got with this, the clutch is a little grabby, but it's not too bad. The steering is a little loose, but it does steer easy. It's a nice tractor to drive. Put it in fourth for running around here. It's a five-speed transmission with a single range. It doesn't I have no idea if it's got live PPO or not. Again, I only feel one stage on the clutch when I operate it. It's neat with those gauges way out on the hood like that. That's oil pressure and water temperature. Your ammeter is here. Neutral, idle it down, shut it off. Now, now here's one that's in my wheelhouse. This is a 1952 Ferguson TEA 2085. They were made in England, and these are great, great little machines. Just like a Ford, very similar to a Ford, a lot of parts interchange, but it's got a heavier front axle, it's got an overhead valve engine opposed to a flathead. It's, it's, it's a great little machine. These things are just awesome. Anyway, the back has got the world famous Ferguson three point hitch. It's got a ground driven PTO, they call it. It's not a live PTO. Zenith carburetor. It's still got its Lucas generator on there. It is 12 volt though. Let's climb aboard and uh, see if we can get this thing cranked up and take it for a rip, eh? Oh, just like home. All right. Give her the key. This thing here, the, the starter, is on the, on the shifter. Let's go. Take this little Fergie for a spin. They run nice in third gear. Oh, how I love these old English Fergusons. I like my Fords too, don't get me wrong. But the very first tractor I owned was just like this. A 1952 Ferguson. We put a horrible Skyline loader on it that was all welded and cobbled up. And it did a lot of work when we first bought this car. There was nothing that we couldn't do with that Ferguson. Alright, so that's the 52 Ferguson. Here's another one of the tractors from my in-laws place. This is a Case VC. So um, it's a member of the Case Letter Series. This one is uh, a wartime unit really. These V series tractors preceded the VA series and these were built from 1940 to 1942. Um, v would be a wide front. This is a VC. This is a narrow front, a row cropper. Um, he got this. It was in really rough shape. It still ain't the prettiest thing in the world. The tires are pretty rough. The wheels are all patched up. Um, but it, it starts up. It runs good. You can drive it around. It doesn't really do much. It's got a PTO and a draw bar on the back. This would be great for someone at the cottage for putting their boat in and out of the water a couple of times a year. You know, moving wagons around and doing that that sort of thing. Uh, as far as use as, uh, as a tractor, I'm I'm not sure. And it seems to leak oil like a sieve from everywhere. That's quite interesting. 
Um, anyway, it is what it is. This one's going to be going cheap. But let's take her for a ride. This is the sixth sixth tractor that I've brought down from my in-laws place. It's an old um, Fordson Major E27N from England. And this one is the, the one that I've chosen to adopt. Um, I've always had a soft spot for Fordson tractors. I had a couple of Dextas back in the day. I had a gasoline Dexta and a diesel Super Dexta and I, and I loved them. Um, I've always been on uh, the lookout for a small Fordson, you know, a Fordson Standard, a Fordson F, a Fordson N, but they're few and far between, and and they're kind of ex expensive. So this one shares a lot of the same, you know, thinking and and components. The engine layout is kind of the same as as the old school Fordson. So I think I'm going to take this one on, and and we'll keep it around here for a little while and, and see what we can do with it. So at the in-laws place, it was basically lawn art. It's It's been sitting outside unused for, oh boy, 10 or 15 years. So, so I got six tractors I got from my in-laws. I managed to sell two, the Case VC and the TEA 2085 Ferguson. Um, time is running out on nice weather and people are starting to not spend so much money. So we've brought these three, the McCormick W4, the Cockshut 30, and the farm I'll see up here to the equipment auction. Um, they're going to be auctioned online between September 26th and October 1st. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully we do okay on them. Time will tell. The last machine I brought down from my in-laws to sell for them is this Massey Harris 44. This thing is a big brute of a tractor, man. Let me tell you, look at the tires on the back. What are these puppies? They are... 14 9 by 30 she's got a big footprint um, so what he used it for was for clearing the snow on his driveway we 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 went out to buy this off a lady and while we were there buying it we noticed the snow plow so we bought that off her too with the idea that we could put the snow plow on the Massey Harris 44 and he could use it to clear his driveway so that's what he did uh, for quite a few years anyway He's going to be getting used to apartment life now, so he won't be needing this. Anyway, let's take her for a spin, shall we? It's like climbing up the jungle gym at the playground when you were a kid. You need to be limber to get up on this old girl. Okay, so. Clutch in. Ignition on. Give her a little choke. Eh, ain't got enough hands. See if she'll go without the choke. Oh, almost, eh? Give her a little more throttle. Either that, I'm gonna have to put the phone down and pull the choke out. There she goes. Those wide belts don't like the alternators, man. There we go. Okay, so the alternator's caught up. So these are the controls for the plow. It's got up and down. Power angle. Pretty awesome stuff, I'd say. Let's take her for a spin. It is kind of hard to steer when you got the when you got the plow raised, but 
in the summertime you generally wouldn't have to plow on and when you're plowing the front wheels will be on snow and ice and stuff so it won't be that bad this is uh i looked up on tractordata.com it's 45 horsepower that's a lot this thing can do some pulling let me tell you or some pushing Brakes work. So we'll drop the blade. That's pretty cool. As usual with my father-in-law, he redid all the electricals, got all new gauges, all new 12 volt wiring. Uh, he put sleeve kits in the engine. This thing is a really nice machine. It starts right up in any weather. It don't care, it just goes, because it's got all Delco electrics, Delco starter, Delco distributor, all good stuff. Anyway, that's it for the Massey Harris 44.